Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah wa barakatuh. Welcome to Ahkam SOS, the show that discusses Islamic duties and practices by His Eminence, the Grand Ayatollah Sayyid Sadiq Shirazi. I'm your host, Mohsin Shah, and joining me is my co host, Sheikh Ali Ma'ash. Assalamu alaikum, Sheikh Na. Wa alaykum as salam wa rahmatullah. Sheikh Na, we were discussing last time on tayammum, um, you know, the methods of tayammum. Um, you mentioned that there's different materials that we can do tayammum on. Can you just go through them for us, please? Inshallah. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim wa sallallahu ala Muhammadin wa alihi al-Tayyibin al-Tahirin. Um, there are things that, that you can do tayammum on, and there, there are actually numbered ones, so you can't do tayammum on, on anything you see around. Um, the ones that the Sayyid mentions them are, for example, the soil, um, clay, for example, sand, anything that is called earth, that, let's simplify it. Anything that is called earth, within the earth, you're allowed to do uh, tayammum on. Also, he brings also examples like, like pebbles, uh, rocks, and even limestone. So all these, you can actually do, do tayammum on and use them for uh, the purpose of tayammum, which is badal and instead of wudu. And then you can uh, begin your salah or, or anything that requires wudu, wajib. Shaykh, I see you have a lovely uh, ring on, on your finger, uh, an aqiq. This is also a stone. Can one perform tayammum on the aqiq? Uh, thank you. Basically, you cannot do tayammum on stones like the aqiq. Um, the only ones you can do is the one, as I've mentioned, like rocks and peb pebbles and, and limestones. Um, no, of course, you can't do on the aqiq and such like. Okay, Sheikh, now what about if the surface I want to perform tayammum on, a piece of clay or soil, sand, what if there's some najasa on it or what if, there's no, uh, if it's najis, am I still permitted to perform tayammum on this? Again, the same conditions that uh, we spoke about with regard to the water to be pure for the wudu and ghusl, the same applies to the tayammum as well. So you have to make sure that um, the, the means that you use for the tayammum, be it a clay or a soil or rock or, or pebbles, they're all tahr and pure. So you can do the tayammum on them and uh, become pure uh, for the purpose of salah and, and so forth. So that's a condition. Another condition that you discussed in wudu and even in ghusl was that the water cannot be usurped. What about in tayammum? The, the soil or the earth that we're using, are we allowed to use them if they're usurped or not? Same thing, again, um, they should be permissible to be used. So you still have to make sure that you get the permission to use that clay or soil or the land of somebody you've just entered and you want to do the uh, tayammum with. Because they are all part of the ibadah and worship. And... Um, the Yusuf itself, it's, it's a sin, it's a ghasub itself. The act of ghasub and Yusuf is sin. So you have to make sure that you um, stay away from these sinful acts and we avo avoid using other people's properties unless with permission. Sheikh, now what if I have um, rings on my hands, watches, things that are, you know, like um, obstacles in the way of me performing tayammum? Can I go over, the, go over them? You have to make sure when you uh, perform the tayammum, there's nothing on your forehead or on your uh, hands, like uh, let's say a watch covering the wrist or f the fingers cover covered by rings and so forth. You have to remove everything and then you can perform the tayammum uh, as pres prescribed and mentioned. So nothing should be in the way of the wiping of the place with tayammum. Sheikh, what if I'm performing tayammum and I mistakenly miss an area? For example, when I was doing my, uh, my forehead, I, my, my hands went out like this, so I've missed the middle part. Or when I was wiping my hand, I missed the, the small finger or something like that. Is my tayammum still valid? Not, it's not valid like the wudu, as we mentioned, and the ghusl as well. You have to make sure that it covers the areas which are mandatory, which is the full forehead and both hands. 
So you have to make sure that every, everything is covered within that boundary when you're actually performing the tayammum. Is there any mustahabat in tayammum? Mustahab in tayammum is uh, when you actually want to do tayammum, it's mustahab mm -hmm. to have some dust picked when you do the tayammum. So okay. let's, let's say you go and do tayammum in dusty places, which is better and, and mustahab, just to have the feel of, of the tayammum. And when you pick that uh, dust, you try to shake it off, and then you start the tayammum. So you just you rub off or you shake it off, and then you begin the tayammum itself after the, uh, the first strike on, on the soil, for example. In addition, if, um, if somebody couldn't find, for example, soil or, or clay for some reason, they couldn't find any rocks or, or, or pebbles, uh, you can actually take uh, the dust, for example, which is under the carpet or, or the rugs, or sometimes the dust under the sofas or the dust over the wardrobes, and you can do tamum on that. Uh, layer of dust, mm. thin layer of dust, you can still do the tayammum. Sheikh, you mentioned that uh, if you can't find uh, s um, surface or earth or sand or, or clay, marble, um, he should use dust. But what if he's uh, you know, living in a house with someone, a mother who's OCD, has OCD and there's no dust in the house whatsoever? What happens there? How does one perform tayammum? Well, the other option is to use mud in this case, uh, okay. to do the term in mud and um, you know, wiping their forehead and, and both hands with the mud, that should be sufficient uh, for the term in this situation. And if there's no mud? Well, if there's no mud and there's no way that the one can do term, according to the Sayyids, uh, fatwa that um, they can actually uh, pray without the tayammum either. So, because the salah cannot be left uh, just because there's no means of tayammum, for example. So you still have to pray, although there's no means of tayammum. So the salah cannot be left so what you're saying is, until it become, becomes qada. Ah, so what you're saying is, is that there's, there's no excuse for missing your prayers, correct? Inshallah. <laughs> also, Sheikhna, I'm doing tayammum. What happens if I have a wound on my hand or if I have, um, you know, uh, a plaster or dressing? How do I perform tayammum then? Well, exactly like the wudu, if there is uh, obstacles which must be there, let's say plasters um, and such like, um, on the places of the tayammum, then you just have to rub on and wipe on the, let's say the hand, the left hand, and there is actually a plaster. So you wipe on the plaster all the way down, and that should be inshallah accepted. Because um, like the wudu, there's a wudu jabiri, as I mentioned. This is also tim jabiri, so you have mm -hmm. no choice. There's a wound, and you have to have that plaster. So just you have to um, wipe on that plaster all the way down, and inshallah, you can uh, begin your salah afterwards. Shaykhna, how does one address doubts that he has in tayammum? Yani after he's completed the tayammum, oh, did I perform it correctly or not? Is my tayammum valid? Did I perform tayammum or not? Um, you know, things like that. As mentioned with regard to um, the ahkam of tayammum in the beginning, in the last episode, again, if somebody has the doubts from the beginning <coughs> that did I do tayammum or no, then you have to redo the tayammum. Because the, the, the original and the base was that there's a doubt. Did I do tayammum or no? Then I have to do tayammum again. Mm -hmm. But if I finish the tayammum, I finished now, and there's a doubt about was the tayammum correct, right? Did I wipe everywhere? Because I finished that uh, specific um, act of tayammum, and I left from this position of tayammum, then any doubts that occurs, I have to just ignore it and go on with the salah and so forth. Okay. Sheikhna, how long does tayammum last? As in, if I do tayammum fajr salah, can, can that one tayammum, if I, if I don't invalidate it, can that one tayammum last until dhuhr and asr? 
as long as there's no water available. You see, the tayammum is badal wudu instead of the wudu. Now, if I do the tayammum and um, I do the salah, and after a few hours, let's say, in the afternoon, I find water, then by the minute or the seconds that I find the water, that thing becomes automatically void and batal. So I have to do, do wudu for the Salat al Asr. And whatever I prayed with that tayammum, now this is an, an issue important for the viewers to know that, that tayyum, tayammum is a restricted and limited hukum and rule for that specific time. When it's actually past that time and moved to, for example, finding water, Whatever I did previously for salah with the tayammum is all accepted. I don't have to repeat it again. So the tayammum remains until I find water, until I find the means which will actually avoid the tayammum. So when I find water, خلاص, I have to switch to wudu. That tayammum was only for that specific time, in the, let's say in the early morning, in the fajr time only. For the duhr asr, I have now water, so I have to use water. I cannot remain with a tayammum and pray the salah while there's water around. What if there is no water and it's come to Zohar Asr time? Is my Taymum still in place or do I have to do Taymum again? If they have not uh, um, broke their situation of, of, of Tahara and, and, and Taymum, uh, such as going to the toilet and so forth, then they can remain because Taymum is Taymum. You know, it's like the Wudu, instead of the Wudu. So you can pray the Subh with it and you can pray the Zohar Asr with it as well. So. Um, if, if, of course, if, if the excuse remains, if, if the, um, let's say, the illness remains, if the lack of water remains, those conditions are met, if they still remain, then he's going to be in a situation of Tahara until he finds water or, or the illness is being eradicated and, and removed. Sheikhna, what are the invalidations of Taymum? What invalidates Taymum that I have to perform it again? Is it the same as Wudu? Again, as I've mentioned in the wudu, yes, exactly the same. Um, the one who goes to the bathroom, the toilet. Okay, so urinating, passing e stools, e exactly. breaking wind. And sleeping, sleeping, as I've mentioned in the wudu. Marital um, relations. Exactly, anything that uh -huh. breaks the, the wudu, uh, the breaks also the tayammum as well. So we have to okay. go back to the conditions of the wudu. That also applies to the tayammum. Same thing, okay. because it's just a replacement of wudu. So you can actually see the difference. Um, in terms of uh, the, uh, the acts that invalidates the tayammum and, and the wudu. They're okay. almost the same. So we had a question sent in. Um, it's actually quite an interesting question. What happens if I've done tayammum, I've prayed salah, okay, and now I have found some water after my salah. I found some water and there's still time to pray that salah. What do I do then? Well, because... Your situation was that to pray in this state and situation, as I've said, uh, you did your search, you did your best, and you, were, you became hopeless of getting more water uh, for, the, for, the, for the wudu. And you did your duty by tayammum and, and pray. If you found water later on, the Sayyid says it's mustahab precaution that the one to redo, uh, re do, uh, do the wudu again, so do with, with water, and then uh, redo the salah to pray it again. But it's mustahab, it's not wajib. Because you, what, we, what you did in that time, you were in a situation that you've lost water, you had no other access to any water. So the taklif and the duty that you did was to do tayammum. So you did your best, that's it. You did your uh, duty, so inshallah it will be accepted. But it's better, as a mustahab, uh, that you... Do it with wudu and redo the salah again. Asan Sheikh, no, thank you very much for that delightful discussion and thank you for the viewers for joining us on today's discussion. If you have any questions in regards to ahkam, tayammum, wudu, ghusl, please send them in to the contact details provided and inshallah the uh, Sheikh will be able to answer them in due course. Until next time, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah wa barakatuh.